And let's Thank talk you. about uh, Mark Miller, because this was, um, Ottawa has been signaling mm. for some time that there will be a plan to reduce the number of international students. He gave us the most recent number. There are more than a million students here in Canada now on international visas. And there's been a lot of discussion about whether the system is out of control, as he himself has said. So finally today, the details on the government's plan to bring in a cap. Explain the plan as you have heard it, David, and why it's significant. Well, the significance here, Heather, is not just that they're changing the way uh, international students are, are allowed to come to Canada in terms of the number and how they're allowed to work and who they bring with them, how they're allowed to work. This is, in some ways, a, a fight that, that Mark Miller is picking with the private college sector in Ontario in particular. He had a lot of criticism there for, for a, what he called sham institutions, suggesting that many of them need to be shut down. There's been an explosion in that sector over the last 10 years uh, with, 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 with these private colleges uh, re recruiting international students, charging them tuition uh, fees many times higher than what you would pay in a public institution and then not providing them with the supports and the housing that they need and, and he feels that this is a significant problem that needs to be addressed. So there's three big things he announced today. One is a temporary two-year cap on new student permits starting in 2024, essentially reducing the, the cap to 364,000 approved applications uh, in September 1 of this year. Now he says that's a 35 percent uh, reduction uh, from 2023. So right there it's about 100,000 or so. Uh, student uh, visas being removed from the system there and that will continue as things go on. They've got taken a two-year period to revamp the whole system but this is the interim measure that's coming in there and what's going to happen with this Heather is that the number, total number of visas are going to be allocated uh, by province based on population. And, and that is going to affect Ontario in particular, where more than half of the current international students are. So there's going to be a pretty sharp drop, it seems, in the number of uh, approved applications for Canada's largest province. The second thing they're going to do starting in September of 2024 is no work permits for students largely at private institutions. Again, targeting the private institutions, allowing exemptions for certain public institutions, but also for graduate level programs programs. Canada wants to recruit masters and doctoral level uh, students to this country, also for professional faculties such as law and medicine, and, and he left open the possibility of certain publicly funded trade schools also qualifying for these exemptions because you want to bring in, say, construction workers to help build houses that were, were, uh, to deal with the number one issue the country is facing in terms of, of, of the housing shortage and also to allow people to come in to say, um, nursing schools, for example. And the third measure, Heather, is a limit on spousal work permits. Uh, one of the things that happens in Canada is that if you get a, a foreign student uh, visa and you come and enroll in a college, if you bring your spouse with you, they can get a work permit. This is no longer going to be possible at the undergraduate level. So spouse, spouses, for example, of master's students, doctoral students, and the medicine, medical schools, those other key areas that they say are a priority for Canada to recruit, they will still be able uh, to qualify uh, for, for work permits. So all of this creates barriers and disincentives for people to come here. It makes it harder for the private colleges. One of the things that stood out for me, Heather, was the way Mark Miller talked about sham co uh, commerce and business degrees that sit on top of a massage parlor that nobody goes into and saying there are a lot of sham institutions that need to be shut down. There's a real sense that he, from him, if you listen to his words, the provinces have either underfunded post-secondary institutions, which have allowed, which has incentivized uh, the public system to go right. after international students, or they've allowed private colleges to go without sufficient regulation, and that's led to this challenge, and something he says he's, he's going to start dealing with right away. When you talk about his language, the sham institutions, you go back to December, I've always yeah. been struck by what he said at a news conference at that time. He's called them the diploma equivalent of puppy mills that are just churning out diplomas, and this is not a legitimate student experience. Experience. So he's been talking about this from some time and then these concrete steps coming in, as you say, two years taking effect immediately and then to be reevaluated at the end of 2025. Uh, looking at those particular institutions, David, and as you say, there are some notable exemptions, notably elementary, secondary school, mm -hmm. public degrees, and then the uh, master's and doctoral degrees, as you mentioned, David. Many who run those Higher education institutions are concerned about this, and they've talked publicly about a one-size-fits-all approach to a visa cap. They worry that Canada won't have the image of a study destination anymore. They're worried it'll hurt some of the institutions in this country. 
it, there seemed to be an acknowledgement here from Mark Miller that they, they're aware of those concerns and are going to be working to address them. What did you hear there? Yeah, so certainly they're, they're trying to shift the balance back in favor of, of the publicly funded institutions. There has been a, a reliance on international students as a revenue stream, as well as just sort of the, to fill out the student body of a lot of uh, post-secondary, publicly funded post-secondary institutions uh, across Canada. But you, you, the, the concern about undermining Canada's reputation as a, as a study destination, private colleges churning out the puppy mill degrees, as, as he sort of described them, giving students no supports, no housing, no wraparound supports to succeed, and essentially bringing people in to, to work in the gig economy or take low-wage uh, jobs is also something that undermines the reputation of Canada as a study destination. So these are the sorts of things they're trying to deal with. The other knock-on effect of this, Heather, is, is that they're trying to deal with uh, reducing the competition for housing, in particular entry-level housing and student housing. Mike Moffat is here. He's an economist with the Smart Prosperity Institute, and he spoke to reporters because he's going into brief Canada uh, cabinet on how to deal with housing and he was asked about this anticipated announcement from Mark Miller and he says it's the single biggest thing the government can do in the immediate term to help deal with with, with the pressure on housing supply in Canada because what you have is just base competition for student housing but also you have investors buying what will be starter homes or single family homes and buying them and flipping them into student housing to take advantage to capture the opportunities in this particular market so he feels that not only is this a good way to protect students from being fleeced for sham degrees and also just to, you know, to help tilt the balance maybe in favor of the, of, of the public sector, it will help alleviate some of the pressure in some cities that are seeing really explosive population growth because of these uh, particular private sector institutions and make it easier for people in those areas to get housing in the short term. 